Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on this next episode. Today, I'll be going over how to assemble and paint a vinyl dinosaur model, the Kyoto Dinoland 1 to 20th scale Stegosaurus. The Dinoland series was released in 1992, and as a kid, I was immediately drawn to this series of incredibly detailed and lively models. I was only able to see them in catalogs and Japanese model magazines as they weren't released in Canada. They were typically showcased in incredible diorama scenes that gave us a glimpse of how these creatures of the past might have actually lived when they roamed the planet millions of years ago. This model was sculpted by legendary Japanese artist Kazunari Araki. Araki's first dinosaur was sculpted in 1974, and he hasn't stopped since. In his lifetime, Mr. Araki has probably sculpted more dinosaurs than anybody in human history. As of 2019, his website lists out 795 models to date, and his work has found its way into collectors' homes and museums around the world. These models came in a box that read Dino Land by Kyoto. As we open the box, we immediately find the main piece, the bag of parts, and the instructions. Let's get this guy out of his box. Let's first have a look at the main body piece. This model has vast amounts of details, especially around the neck area. It's hard to believe it's basically been sitting in a shoe box for over 28 years. Here's a shot of the opposite side, and taking a look at the top, we can see these individual slots for the plates. Here's the tail piece, which also shows some slots for the plates. Taking a closer look at one of these plates, we can see some fine detail. Each plate is coded, so this is L6, which corresponds to a spot on the model, L6, right there. To assemble this model, we'll need some boiling water to soften the parts in order to remove the excess vinyl. As you can see, this piece is pretty solid, but when dumped into boiling hot water, even for a few seconds, it comes out softer than butter. After it's been softened by hot water, we have a few seconds to work with it to remove the excess vinyl. You want to be sure to cut off all the excess vinyl on all the individual pieces. After the excess vinyl has been removed, we'll want to stuff the model like a Thanksgiving turkey. For this, I'm going to use an old IKEA manual. You'll want to do this to avoid the vinyl warping and losing its shape. This was one step that was missed on the neck of my Brachiosaurus model, and now he looks like he's permanently being force choked. I'm using a hairdryer to heat up the parts before gluing. This makes it easier to manipulate the parts so they fit together more tightly. For the plates, I'll want to make sure to keep track of where on the back of the model each plate fits into. Here's a shot of our assembled model. I'm going to cut off a piece of two-part epoxy to fill in any gaps on the model. The epoxy I use is called green stuff, and when mixed together, it becomes a green putty that dries solid. I use these rubber tools to push the putty to make any gaps invisible. You can see me following the contours of the skin folds here. The first is to apply a gray primer on top of the entire model. This creates a better surface for the paint to cling to and makes the paint less likely to rub or chip off. Then apply a light beige color. I typically apply a counter shading paint scheme on all my dinosaur models, with a darker upper side and lighter underside. 
Here, I'm applying several coats of a watered down mixture of Vallejo's Olive Green and Deep Green. I'm taking special care to apply it only to the upper side of the model and being sure to leave some beige on the underside. For the plates, I was inspired by an artist named Sen Sen, who created an awesome design. I'm going to apply a basic Vallejo yellow on the plates, being sure to leave a bit of beige in the center. I then apply an orange mixed with a touch of brown to the plates, making sure to leave some beige and yellow in the middle. The plate should start looking like a nice summer sunset. This is quite the process, as I have to paint both sides of the plates. I then apply a sapia color to the edges. I set a piece of paper behind the plates to ensure the paint doesn't spray onto the other plates. Here, I'm applying a green wash to the green upper side of the body. This darkens the crevices of the skin, allowing the detail to pop a bit more. I then apply a gray wash to the underside. This creates some depth in the skin folds on the underside. I then dry brush with some beige to bring out the details. For this next step, I'm painting an outline pattern which will cover the top side of the body. I typically use references from other amazing dinosaur art. For this one, I'm going to freestyle the pattern. Since we don't know what dinosaurs truly look like, you are free to use your imagination. This pattern continues through to the other side. I'll want to make sure the pattern is fairly consistent around the entire model. Here's a shot of the pattern I created. Next, I'm using a thicker brush to fill in this pattern with the same dark green. I enjoy this step quite a bit, as I don't have to think too much and I find it quite therapeutic, almost like an adult coloring book. After filling in the dark green, I use the same color to create random spot patterns throughout the model. As I was doing this, I realized they kind of looked like small islands off the coast of a continent. Continue these small little spots and blemishes all the way down to the feet. Back to the plates. I try to replicate a similar pattern that I showed earlier. For this, I'm using a detail brush with some watered down dark brown. I try to create three line patterns on each plate. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I wash every plate with a Vallejo Sapio wash. This darkens the plates filling in all the details and brings all the colors and patterns together. I'm adding slightly darker green blotches to my green pattern to break it up a bit. I feel this makes the skin pattern look a little bit more realistic. I'm adding these blotches fairly randomly, wherever I think they'd look good. Here, I'm airbrushing some sapia onto the base of the tail spikes. It's time to take our stegosaurus to the nail salon. I'm brushing on a pale gray to all the toes. I use the same pale gray for the beak. Next, I'm applying a sapia wash to the tail spikes, toenails, and the beak. This darkens these areas a bit, filling in any small details so they become more apparent. Finally, my least favorite part of painting, the eyes. I first apply a dark red to the entire eye region, trying to avoid getting paint outside of the eye. After the red dries, I apply a basic yellow while leaving a bit of the dark red around the edges of the eye. Last, I use black for the pupil. I hold my breath every time I do this as it can easily look googly eyed and I'd have to start all over again. Here's a look at our finished Stegosaurus. The whole process of painting and filming this model was a great learning experience for me, and I hope to improve for future videos. If you're looking for a vinyl dinosaur model to paint up yourself, I'd recommend starting with eBay. I also hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more future dino content. Thanks!